Travis Ryer, the BamaOnline.com staff from inside Coleman Coliseum, where everything is quiet right now, although we're seeing signs of this weekend's NCAA Gymnastics Regional uh, signage around the building, uh, cameras going in to televise the event, and uh, Dana Duckworth's ladies will certainly be in fine postseason form when they hit the mats here uh, this weekend. But for now, we're going to talk some football. After the media observation period during Wednesday's practice, the Crimson Tide back at it in full pad work. And uh, kind of an overcast day out there, a little breezy too, and it showed up in some of the passes that the quarterbacks were throwing, ball fluttering a little bit. But um, some of the guys with a little more zip, like the David Cornwells, Jalen Hurts, uh, Blake Barnett, didn't seem to affect them too much. So uh, individual drills about what you would expect for those guys at those Positions both quarterbacks and receivers really got a good look today at tight ends and the offensive tackles. Did some interesting combination work with those two positions, working with Mario Cristobal, of course, now working specifically with those two spots. Um, saw some interesting pairings during that drill. Saw O.J. Howard, a veteran tight end, paired up with a true freshman and Jonah Williams at left tackle. Uh, doing some things together. Williams, I've talked about it in the past. The guy has C4 in his hands. Now, you look at him, and, and he's listed at 280, and you see where there's room for growth physically for this guy. Uh, up top, he's going to fill out, I think, a little bit more. I'm, I know he is. Maybe a, a good bit in the, in the gap between spring practice and even fall camp. But when it comes to getting his hands and his punch, as they like to say with offensive line play, uh, he can move people. And uh, we saw some of that today. And uh, Lester Cotton working over on the right side, uh, paired up uh, with Hale Hemkes, the true sophomore tight end who saw action in 14 games last year. As a true freshman, they worked together during the drills. We saw Miller Forrestall, uh, a true freshman working with, um, uh, I think it was Charles Baldwin, the junior college transfer at left tackle. And uh, also Corin Curvin at the right tackle spot, uh, working with another veteran in Brandon Green. So the depth, at two positions where you had concerns a little bit the last year or so, it seems like it's starting to clear up uh, when you look at some of the guys that I just outlined uh, that they've brought in through recruiting. Uh, really the first spring in a while, the first time in a while that we haven't seen Brandon Green in number 58 at some point during practices. He's been in number 89 and uh, working uh, as a tight end along with Hemkes and O.J. Howard, but some good stuff from that period today. And uh, I think you can feel good about not only what Alabama has uh, coming in or coming back uh, in terms of the center and guard spots where we continue to see Ross Pierce Baker work at center, continue to see Bradley Bozeman at left guard, Alphonse Taylor obviously at right guard, uh, but some, some signs that, uh, you know, you get Cam Robinson back at left tackle. He's not even practicing right now. And, and I think you're going to feel pretty good uh, about what you got at those positions. So that was where a lot of the focus was today on offense. Uh, the running backs, about what you would expect. Damian Harris leading that group through drills with Bo Scarborough, Ronnie Clark also in that mix, uh, and some other guys. So uh, obviously a couple of recruits coming in will have a chance to impact that top three or four. But uh, for now, uh, very much clear that the top two or three guys are, are in place, or so it appears. Um, you know, we talked about Xavier Marks listed as a running back. Continue to see him with the wide receivers during individual drill work. Defensively, no major changes on that side of the ball. Um, Injury-wise, I think you're starting to see some, some good things happen. As we saw Eddie Jackson back in the secondary, still in a black non-contact jersey, but working at the safety spot in individual drills today. So that was a good sign. Uh, really wasn't uh, any big concerns as far as his availability for next season, but uh, starting to see him get incorporated maybe a little bit more into drill work. Also, Dakota Ball, uh, who's uh, working once again with the defensive line after spending a year or so with the tight ends and H-backs. We saw him out there in a black non-contact jersey working with Bo Davis's group with the defensive line. So some interesting things from an injury standpoint on the defensive side of the ball. The linebackers look pretty much the same. We did see Keith Holcomb out there today. Uh, there's been some question about his availability because of baseball. 
wondered if he would play in last night's game against Auburn down in Montgomery. Apparently, he provided his own transportation down there, and he did play in the game. Came into the game in the sixth inning, had a hit and a walk, um, but he was back in the football mix and apparently will not be in Athens with the baseball team when they get their series underway with the Bulldogs beginning tomorrow night over at UGA. So Holcomb out on the practice field today along with the other guys that we've seen consistently at that inside linebacker position, Reuben Foster, Sean Dion Hamilton up top, Rashawn Evans still working in there, Josh McMillan working in there, Keaton Anderson, I uh, mentioned Holcomb, outside spots look pretty much the same as well with Tim Williams, Ryan Anderson, Christian Miller, Mecky Brown, um, Anthony Jennings, um, Christian Bell, uh, the guys that Jamie Mosley, the depth, you know, you go on and on about those guys on the edge. But um, for the most part, it was a lot of the offense today that I spent time watching. You'll see footage of that uh, tight end and tackle stuff that I mentioned. Uh, I got video of that while we were out there. That'll be up on the website in just a little bit. Charlie Potter working up a practice report hastily as we speak from Coleman Coliseum. He'll have that up for you as well. So we'll have practice footage. We'll have Charlie's report. Charlie also had a chance to talk with a couple players earlier, uh, Deshaun Hand uh, being one of them. So it'll be interesting to see what Charlie has from that session. So a lot of coverage still for you here in spring drills. The Crimson Tide will go back to work after Thursday off. They'll go back on Friday in preparation for Saturday's scrimmage at Bryant-Denny Stadium, the first full scrimmage of 2016 spring drills. So a big couple of days coming up for this football team as it prepares for that practice on Saturday. A lot of coverage again coming up throughout the evening, throughout the week really here on BamaOnline.com. Once again, Coleman Coliseum getting ready. 2016 NCAA Gymnastics Regional coming up uh, for the Crimson Tide as they host once again um, a regional and look to advance on uh, to the finals. I guess it's the final eight, the Elite Eight, the Super Eight, that uh, they've kind of made a, a home away for home, for home, from home over the last 30 years or so. So plenty of coverage coming up, especially on the football front. Keep it right here on BamaOnline.com as we update you on a pretty consistent basis.